thanks very much everyone. I'm uh, just going to jump right into this here. Uh, who am I? Bill Gilmore. Um, I'm Bill Gil on Twitter. If you want to hit me up, I will 100% follow you back. Get some sort of little WordPress community going. Um, I don't want to dwell on this too long, but I just wanted to let you know who I am. Not to big myself up, but more to give you context to why I'm telling you this stuff today, okay? So, essentially, I am a front-end developer. I work at Flint Studios. It's a really exciting development house that we work in. Um, we're currently recruiting and expanding, so if any of your front-end developers, back-end developers, and you're looking for a new challenge, uh, let me know because we'll be really interested to hear from you. Um, I have five years uh, experience building WordPress themes. I use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, a little bit of PHP, which we're going to look at today, but I'm not a PHP developer. A lot of WordPress API magic is why I... Come on in. Don't worry. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, so I'm also a bit of a hobbyist JS application developer. I recently developed a to-do list app which I released, released on the App Store and uh, dabbled with a couple of wee things like the search engine jQuery power that I made and stuff. So I'm um, also a huge WordPress fanboy. Uh, we used WordPress for a self-hosted blog back in 1999 with my boy Kristen here where we would blog about literally the most un correlated stuff ever. <laughs> I think it was just the excitement of seeing our written word on the internet was half of the fun. Um, then I learned a little bit of HTML and CSS with also some help from my friend Kristen here. Um, then also Linda and Udacity. And I began to earn a, earn a living just with those like uh, quite um, simple skills and WordPress together was able to I was able to deliver like products that a client would actually really like. Um, so I tried all of the sorts all the different systems as well. Julma, Drupal, um, even Magento for my sins. If any of you guys here are working on Magento day in day out, you really have my sympathy. It's a terrible <laughs> system. Um, uh, WordPress is used by 60% of all CMSs apparently now, so that's a pretty amazing thing and a huge market share, which is why I love it so much. So as, important, as importantly as who I am is who I'm not. Um, I'm not a designer, as you're going to see from this example I've made today. I'm, no real passion about design, I'm just trying to show you the functionality of WordPress API, so it's going to look pretty nasty. Uh, I'm not a PHP developer, so even though I dabble with a little bit of PHP here and there, it does power WordPress. I would never describe myself as like a talented PHP developer, it's just that WordPress makes it so damn easy for us. Um, I'm not a fan of playing back-end tennis, or playing project tennis with the back-end. Happens a lot with Magento, we fix something, they break it, they go back to us, we break it, it just goes back and forth and back and forth. That doesn't happen with WordPress. A client comes to us, they get a really nice design from our design team, and I deliver a full stack product, and no need for going to back end, because WordPress just makes it so easy for us. And importantly, I'm not even smarter than your average bear, just like our friend Yogi here. I'm definitely not, no huge PhD, no masters, no mad amount of training. Uh, just working kind of uh, with online resources and learning as much as I could, but uh, I'm definitely not any smarter than anyone else in this room, so everything I can do, you can do better, I'm sure. Uh, just a quick note, I toyed with the idea of doing some light coding to make this more immersive, but if anybody here is familiar with my man Shigeru Miyamoto here, head of Nintendo, uh, created Mario and Zelda, he had an epic fail uh, doing a live demonstration at E3 about five years ago, and Nintendo never did one since. So if pre-recording is good enough for Nintendo, it's good enough for me. Uh, let's get into this. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today, but I just want to say thanks very much for everybody who come. It's a really great honor to be able to give even something very small back to the community that has made such a huge difference in my life. So, let's have a look at the amazing world of WordPress API. So, I, I, initially I had all of this, like, I wanted to take you from, like, no code to finished product. Um, I made all those resources, and then I ended up having to bend a load of them because I did a time of it, and it was over an hour and a half. So I'm just going to really quickly hammer through the basics because we all use WordPress and I'm sure you guys all probably know these tags. But let's have a quick look at them anyway. Let's get all of them going. So we've got just PHP tags wrapped around WordPress API and it does that, that magic for us that we don't have to worry too much about but it does some really cool stuff. We can call out the top two of the blog info. So just by doing blog info name, blog info description, we can pull out the name of the site and the description of the site. Same with title and content, you're pulling out the title of whatever poster page you're on and the content of your poster page. Same with header, footer, and sidebar, you're just pulling out the contents of your header PHP, your sidebar PHP, and your footer. So let's scoot past this. Um, so if I give you a quick example here of, uh, we have our name, our description, our title, and our content tags there that we just looked at. If we just put them on the page, this is what we would get. The name of our site, our description, our title, and our page content. Simple, simple stuff. 
So let's have a little quick look at the featured image, a really nice feature of WordPress that I have been loving since day one. I've um, got a quicker video for you here. You can see I don't have any featured image here. It's not that it's hidden in the screen options or anything. It's just not there. It hasn't been activated in the theme yet. So we're going to use go in there functions.php and say add theme support post thumbnails. That's it. That's all I had to add to that. And all of a sudden, just by magic, we have our featured image here. So I'm sure you guys, I'm sure people have done this before, even if you're even if you're just a blogger or whatever, you should probably use your featured image. Just gonna upload it really quickly. And I put in a picture of Queens, this is an example. And I have my featured image. And it gives us a little bit of feedback here to show that it's added, and then we hit update and we're ready to move on. So that's kind of cool, and you can see that on the front end, we don't have anything yet. Obviously, because we have to go back into our theme, and then we're going to add the call to, to that. So I'm just creating a new div called Featured Image, a divider, just to wrap it. And then I'm going to put in the post thumbnail. That's it, that little bit of API will now display the image object on our page. And it already looks a little bit nicer with some color. And you can see that I'm not a designer, right? It's looking pretty nasty so far. Um, but can we make this a little bit smarter? How can we use the image to be a little bit smarter? Heck yes, we can. We're going to use the post thumbnail URL. So we're going to get the address of where that image is held, and then we can use it to style around it and make it look a little bit nicer. So I've got my banner div feed made here, and uh, just the wrapper is just to hold it in place in the page so it doesn't become the full width, okay? It's nothing special there. And then in the style tag, I'm going to pass in my post thumbnail URL this time instead of just the URL. And I've also added a little tiny bit of uh, CSS here just for the banner to, to make it responsive. It's going to be size cover. Um, and some like uh, big colored white for the H2 tag, which is just static content at the minute. And we've put some padding on that to make it look a bit nicer. And hey presto, just with that tiny bit of CSS and that little bit of WordPress API, we've built a nice feature for every page, a little topper that has like a banner. It's going to pull through every page you go to, it'll pull through the image and it'll bring, bring that little static at the minute title. So the problem with that is when we add features to, to a site and then we add clients to those features, we get trouble every single time. So what we're going to do is add in a little fallback. Um, you can see this is exactly the same code, except this time instead of having just my thumbnail URL, I'm just using PHP to ask if it has a thumbnail, then use the thumbnail. But if not, we're going to fall back to this. This is a really nice API here, our template directory. That gets the URL of our working template, whatever we're using. And then the IMG is a folder that I created, just a normal folder for image. And Phil Murray is uh, a picture of Bill Murray, but it fills in the gaps. So if any of you guys ever make websites and they come to the client, which they never do, never gives you any pictures, we used to use placeholders, now we use Phil Murray because it's a lot more fun. So we can see that we have that code in place in our app here. And then if I put it by my inspector tools, you can just see that's nice and responsive, but that's a tiny bit of CSS, it doesn't matter what size we use it. And then also, if we're a completely dopey client and we remove the image or forget to put it in, we now have our Phil Murray fallback, the beautiful man himself. Back over, refresh the page, and there he is. So even the, the, even the dumbest of clients can't mess that up on us, which is a great feature, it's exactly what we want. Um, so let's look at custom fields next. I said that H2 title that was on the top of our banner is just static. We don't want to have the same thing coming in on every single page. So we're going to use custom fields to make that, um, to make that different for every page that we're on. So you can see at the minute I have no custom fields down here. There's nothing in the panel. That's because I have to turn it on just for my screen options. Sometimes it's off by default. And then when I open it up, I'm going to add in two different types of custom field here, okay? I'm going to put one called banner title, which is obviously going to replace that banner title. And then I'm also going to use it in a more interesting way. I'm going to put three of the same type in. So this one is called games. Let's pretend this is a page where I'm making a list of all my favorite video games, okay? So games Mario, games Zelda, games Splatoon. I'm going to put in my big Nintendo fanboy as well, WordPress, in case you haven't noticed. So this one is going to be unique, it's only going to be used once, but this one is going to be what we would call an array, like um, a bunch of the same thing, and we're going to use them as a feature on this page, okay? So I hit update here, and that updates my file, or updates my post, and then there's two ways we can sort of tackle this one, okay? We can just use the old simple tag, the meta, and what that will do is literally just dump everything, just like crap it all out on our page. So you can see it's given us both of our custom fields, and it's also given us our options from our custom, or our values that we give into the custom field. 
I think that's cool, but it's not particularly like a great feature just like that. So what we're going to do is improve this with a little bit of PHP. Very, very simple PHP. So this time we have the same div called meta, but we're going to have a PHP variable called games. I could really do with longer arms or a laser pointer, or either of those an option. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll try my best. Uh, so um, what we're going to do this time is create a PHP variable called games. And we're, it, that games is going to be populated by the post meta that is I declared was called games. If you remember, we called it that in the back end. And then for each of the game in games, we're going to echo out one list item, and it's going to be the game. Also, I put a little bit of CSS in this just so you can like I'm just going to float it to the side like it's some sort of e sidebar, okay? And then we go back to the front end, and I have my little sidebar here that has all these echoed out. So that could be a really cool thing. Like, say for example, you were doing your 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 client is um, looking to make like top fives if they're doing like book reviews or something or um, anything that they want to sort of group together like that. You can really easily make that and then just give them like a little list of uh, different custom fields that they can use as a feature in each of the templates. Um, there's also a quick shout out to Advanced Custom Fields plugin, which does this on like a probably a slightly better way, but. I thought, I just want to stick to WordPress API today. I thought once I started trying to cover plugins, and that's what was making my, my thing so big. Plus, we have our next speaker here who's going to tell you about a really cool thing called Toolset, which also does this in a, in a sort of higher level and uh, also gives you custom post types too. So I'll hear about that next, which is going to be great. So at the minute, this is a page template, Jim, but not as we know it. This is not no longer like just a standard page. We're starting to put in extra features that are only going to be unique to this template or maybe another template that we'll make from this. So what we want to do is start to use WordPress's page templates. This is brilliant. This is something that like in other systems, that's not like name and shame, but in other CMSs is really freaking convoluted and difficult to do. In WordPress, just like everything, it's really, really simple, okay? So here's my page.php, my standard what every page should look like on my site, okay? It has no templates in here. That's because I haven't created a template yet, and it's literally this easy. I'm just going to paste in that tag at the top there, template name custom layout. You can call that custom layout whatever you want. It could be uh, the contact page, it could be Bill's page, it could be uh, Pikachu's notes, anything you want to call it, that doesn't matter. But what you do need to do is when you name it, Prefix it at the end with dash template. So I called it custom dash template there, and it was has to have dash template and this tag at the top. They're the two key ingredients. So when we refresh, we go back in here, and we're going to refresh the page. You'll see that all of a sudden we have this new area here called template. And you can see the name custom layout is that PHP tag I took it put at the top. So I'm just going to keep this on my page.php at the minute. And page.php shouldn't have all these extra features, so I stripped them all out have a really good think about this to make sure I don't miss anything if I remember. Yeah. <laughs> strip out that meta, hurry up Bill. You need a fast forward button. Um, so yeah, I strip out all these features because this is my page.php. It's going to be used just for a standard page and the client is going to put all the cool stuff they want to in the content area so that we don't have to kind of deal with that later on. And then you can see when I reload it, it goes to a boring page. I want to change back to my custom layout that we just defined. It comes back to our cool template that we're building. So that's a really powerful tool. What you want to do, or what, I don't want to tell you guys what you want to do, but what I do on a lot of jobs is every page that is unique and has unique features to it has its own template. It means that the user can come back at the end, they're like, oh, I want to make another for another page that's just, just, like, just like my contact form. I'll use the contact template and I'll put extra stuff in the content area. It's just a really powerful and simple tool to use. So, just a note, uh, post templating is just as easy. We were looking at a page template there. Um, you can use this for posts as well. So you would just put the same tag at the top, but this time we're going to put an extra thing at the bottom called template post type, and we're going to put in post. Obviously, if I did a comma and put in page after that, I could use that template on a page as well. If I had custom post types, which maybe might get mentioned in the next talk, any custom post types, like I made a product post type or whatever, you would just put a product on the end of that, whatever the whatever the slug of the post or the of the post type is. And you'll be able to call it up in the same, exactly the same way. That's like that little meta box or meta box here, and you would just change it. So let's look at template parts. What we built at the oh, I thought that was going to be a video. Okay, so here's what we built for the banner. Okay, 
This is good because we've built a really nice feature for the for our site, okay? I mean, I'm not trying to like dig up my own code. Like, so let's just imagine this is a really well-developed feature, okay? But we've got our banner, and we're going to use it not just on the home page template, not just on the about page template, not just on the contact. We're going to use this on 10 or 15 different templates. Like, I'm working on a site at the minute where, like, I think it's like pushing about 40 templates at the minute because it's such a huge site and everything is bespoke on each page. So if I wanted to use that and I put that code at the top of every one of those templates, the client comes back to me in a year's time and he goes, yo, I want to change this part of the temp part of the banner. And I'm like thinking, oh my God, where did I use that code? Like I have to go through each of these files or search through them, maybe I'll miss one. Absolute nightmare to update. So what we do is we save this out as a PHP file. It's just called banner.php. <laughs> so it's just called banner.php and uh, what we're going to do then is use some more WordPress API to call that file in. So all I've done at the top here is put in my get template part banner as, if I can go back, no it does not. Get template part banner at the very top and we don't need to write in that PHP actually, it just that API does that and it grabs that file and it puts it at the top. So then when I use that in 10 different files or 20 different files, the client comes back in a year's time. I changed one file and all the templates are updated. So it's just the power of PHP really. And I'm not trying to say that WordPress is doing this, like PHP is doing it, but WordPress uses our, that API just makes it really, really easy to do. So that was quite a lot of stuff. And I'm talking fast because I'm worried that we're, we're running out of time. So let me do a quick recap. And if, if nobody's enjoying that Pikachu in a cab, you have no soul, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so WordPress API, we looked at the blog info using the site name and description. So obviously, like if you make a theme, it's not gonna. It's is that ten minutes for me? That's ten minutes for you. you still. To, well, you need to wind that back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we can use the blog info, and then when we make that theme, obviously the next person's logo comes through, or the next person's title comes through at the top. Okay, so. Uh, we look at the page title and content, which obviously will be unique to every page it's loaded on, or every post. Uh, the sidebar, didn't mention that one. Using a featured image as a URL. Uh, custom fields as well we looked at. Um, page posts and templates. And using template parts. I would now like to apologize for anyone who is a seasoned developer. That was probably a little bit simple for you. The next part's a bit more interesting. And the final part, I think it might actually, there might be something even from Juan Christum here. Who knows? Um, so the next part, right? Giving the client more control. The client always wants to have control over the sites that we build for them and they don't want to be coming back to us for regular maintenance for really, really simple stuff. So these couple of tools will uh, sort of make things a little bit easier for them. First up we've got short codes. I'm sure everyone's used to short code here. Anyone who has contact forms on their site is probably using square bracket, contact form 7, square bracket. Um, we can actually just make our own short codes so that we can have content added in. The client has uh, control over content that is code based without being able to see or more importantly break the code. So we can save out little chunks and the client can use them. So here's an example that I made. Um, any designers get ready to cringe when you see this example. Um, here's a, a, a little example I made of like a little uh, offer that the client's going to offer and it has a call to action at the bottom. So every time they're having a special product they can fire in this and then they can have a little call to action. It has some simple CSS, it just adds a little thumbs up background image. Get ready to cringe designers. Um, so this is what it looks like. Our content finishes and then this comes in. But the client can't control that. They don't know, they can't put that anywhere they want. They maybe don't want it on every single page. So what we're going to do is take that HTML that made that and we're going to minify it. Um, if you haven't heard of that expression before, just Google HTML minifier and it just takes a lot of HTML and makes it into one big long line in those spaces. And here we go, so back into our functions.php where all the magic happens in WordPress. Uh, you can see our post thumbnails is still here and just underneath we're going to add in our add shortcode API and then we're going to call it WordCamp Demo. That's actually how the, what the user will use to call it on the other side. And then we're going to name our function here which is uh, WordCamp Demo Shortcode. Obviously you can tell anything that I've called WordCamp is just for you to name. You don't need to use the same naming conventions, there's no need to call everything WordCamp. And all this does is, uh, I think I actually saw this in the, in the previous one, it's just going to return uh, your HTML here at the minute. What we're going to do is paste our HTML code over your HTML. So that's what it looks like. We have our short code here with our HTML in it. And then what they can do as, the, as a user is they can just put it in wherever they want. So it's not going to be below the content now, it's going to be part of the content. 
and they can have that lovely, great deal, call to action any, anywhere they want on their website. So uh, you could make that, if you had a lot of common, sort of common features like that in a site, what it could do would be a really nice feature is to make like a little library for them of little short codes and then they can pop them kind of in and out whenever they want. Right, so at the minute we're, we're starting to get a bit of a messy functions.php, um, which is something I'm not a fan of. Um, I like to kind of keep my, my functions.php super clean, mainly because I don't want to scroll through 2,000 lines of code at the end of a project, but also because the next developer who takes it off me doesn't want to do that either. They were like, okay, I have a problem with this, I want to replace that, I want to take this out. So what I like to do is store everything in the INC folder, it's just a folder that I make, ink, I just, it's just an include folder, and then I call that in my functions.php, so that's just a kind of a nice tip, and it uses this include, and then we get, we saw earlier on, get template directory, that gets our active template, and then include folder and shortcode.php. So that just means I'm not looking at all of my code in one place, and it means I can keep it separated out, which is a lot cleaner. So, let's go and look at widget areas, because once we start to add all this stuff in, you would see the functions PHP just scroll away on the page. So let's look at our widget areas, and um, what we're going to do is add two different widget areas in here. Um, you can add as many as you want. The reason I put in two is just to show you that you can just take this code and copy and paste it and put in as many as you want. It's a really good, uh, I'm sure everybody knows what a widget area is here, but it's the way you can sort of drag and drop with a user interface, different like chunks of code in, and obviously loads of plugins use widgets as well, like, which is great. So we have our, we're just gonna add action here. Word widgets in it, word count, uh, that's, that's what we need to tell that it's gonna be a widget. This is our, what we've defined here, word count widget in it. And then that calls our function up here, which registers these. You'll see that these are both the same, but they both have a unique name and a unique ID, and that's really important. The name is for the user, so they know where they're putting the widgets. The ID is for us, the developer, so that we can call the right one. So back into our sidebar.php, where there's a static content earlier, um, we have a quick if to see if their sidebar widgets ID is active, and if it is, we want to display our widget, our dynamic sidebar, sidebar widgets. Was our ID for that. And then as you can see, you come back to the front of the site and there's nothing here. Because I've also separated this out into two columns now, but there is nothing there because we haven't added them. This isn't quite right to show you that I've separated that main content area with 70% uh, added the flex to it and 30% uh, for my sidebar. There's the active code that's going to run. Here is my sidebar that we just looked at as well, where we talked about the if statement. And importantly, the ID. You've got to get the ID right or you're going to call the wrong thing through or call nothing. And then we go back to our WordPress. Oh, sorry, the last thing we've got to do always is come back to our functions PHP and make sure that we call in that extra PHP file that we put inside the ink folder. So again, that include tag and our, we're going to see it again, our get template directory. Really, really good to get our active template. And then the actual address of the code that we wrote. Good time for a water break. It seems like I'm typing really slow, but it's because I'm sort of semi-freaking out as I'm doing this. I'm like, people are going to be watching this. <laughs> so excited. It was kind of a nerve trying to film it to myself. Was like, it was actually pretty, I had a little tissue blood. It was uh, actually pretty, pretty unnerving. So we go back, and uh, we're going to have a new area up here, here, which is going to be the custom, or our widgets area. And that's because we've uh, initialized the widgets. WordPress is like, hey, this guy's going to use widgets. I'm going to put this new area in here. And we're just going to drag and drop some, um, some widgets in. But again, the widgets are really powerful. It's, these are just the default WordPress ones that I'm sure everybody's seen. But there's also like a whole library of plugins. Like if you want to pull your Twitter feed in there, all you've got to, go, all you've got to search for is a Twitter widget plugin. And um, there is just an unlimited amount of them. So you just got to remember to hit save is uh, what I didn't do the first time I practiced it. I got very confused. And then we go back and we refresh that, and you can see we've got a new sidebar area, and we're pulling our widgets through into it, which is great. Clients love that because then they can play with them and experiment, and if you do it, not just always in the sidebar, but in different parts of the site, they really like that, that they can put in their own stuff. So, you also just to say that uh, the footer widgets can be called in there, and you can add in, just copy and paste that code, you can add in as many widget areas as you want. So the next thing I want to look at really briefly is menus. It's a really nice, nice powerful tool. You'll see here that I don't have a navigation bar, but I have made a load of pages, just that, like pretty much as lower maps and all those pages. But 
I want to make a navigation so that everybody can get to those pages. And I experienced that when I first started my job, people were doing this statically, and I just couldn't understand why. It's like the, the client comes back to you in six months, like, I've made five new pages, I want to put them up. So we put in our WP now menu, and importantly, I called it WordCamp again. Um, this is just a look at the CSS, it's going to power it's super simple, there's just a couple of pseudo elements to make this drop down that I'm going to show you. Um, but very, very simple CSS as well. Um, but yeah, so instead of that client coming back and moaning that they want to see you know, their new five pages they've added in the nav bar, this just gives them a really amazing user interface that they can like, really quickly update their nav. So we go back in here, we're going to make a new menu from our appearance menu. We're going to call it WordCamp because that was the ID that we assigned to it. I'm just going to drop in all the pages here. So drop in all the pages. And then you can see that I can drag and drop these around. A really cool feature as well is I can change the, the uh, tag. That was too long for navigation. And I can change it to home. That doesn't change the address of the page, the URL. It doesn't change the title of the page. It just changes it for the nav, which is a nice feature. I can also drag and drop because these are children pages of WordPress. So I can drag them in so that they're going to set as children pages. And that tiny bit of uh, pseudo CSS there will, um, will allow that to work. So you can see we can, we've just pulled up an nav there and then we can roll over those really nicely. A um, little bit of CSS3 for a transition. And um, yeah, that's a really nice kind of powerful tool as well. So this is a thing that I don't see utilized enough on sites. Um, IGN use it really well, although I don't think they're powered by WordPress, but it's a thing so that whenever you write up a post, if you have multiple bloggers, like my friend Matthew here, he runs his own website with multiple bloggers on it. This is a really great feature that at the end of the post, it'll tell you a little bit about that person who's written the article. So you can see here, this is my uh, information on my horrible work photograph covered up. They made me do it for here. It's usually a picture of a pixel bill, but uh, they made me put on my professional one for this, which I hate. Um, so this is information about me. Uh, I've got my bio here. Uh, I've got my website address. I've got my name. And I've got my pick. So if I go through, really, really, again, super simple API code that allows me to do really cool, powerful things. I've got my div for bio, I've got my pick in there, um, and I'm going to grab my avatar using my ID, as my, or using my email as my ID. Um, then I'm going to say, find out more about the author's nickname, and I'm going to have my author's description, which was that bio. And then I'm going to have a little thing saying, you can contact me via, and then that link is just wrapping my URL that I put in there around my website. So at the end of every blog post, every author will have their own unique things show up there. Find more about Bill, find more about Kristen, find more about Matt, whoever it is. It'll be their picture, it'll be their bio. I think it's a really nice feature to use on sites, especially if you're using it for blogging. So we got this pretty far through this, and the next little bit, we'll just recap this, I think. We looked at using custom shortcodes. We looked at widget areas. We looked at WP navs, so we're making uh, nice interactive navigation menus. We looked at author details, which I also like to call post sign off because it's like a nice way to like say, like have a, a sign off at the bottom or a call to action. Okay, and now the last thing I'm going to look at, which anyone who's a really seasoned theme developer, I hope I didn't bore you too much with the simple stuff there, is really aware that there's going to be a different range of abilities here, and there's nothing I hate more than going to a talk and someone just dives in at the deep end, and I'm sitting there going, what the heck are you talking about? I, I'm getting nothing from this. So thanks for bearing with me if you're a very seasoned theme developer, but this should be pretty cool. This is uh, being introduced in WordPress 4.5, I think. So the WP Customize, which allows us to literally customize everything um, on our site. And it's also going to wrap up all the other stuff we've kind of talked about so far. So in our functions PHP, we're going to activate this by putting in add action, customize register. And we're going to call it again, WordCamp Customize Register, which I'm sure you can guess is uh, just a unique name that I made up. You can call it whatever you want. Then when we go in the back end, we've got a new area coming up here called Customize. So let's have a look at it. The cool thing about this is everything we kind of talked about so far is now controllable from one place. So the user is going to be able to change their site identity. Do you remember we talked about the blog info, the title, and the tagline? And when they update it, they're seeing a live update that just happens. You know, like as we type it in, we're going to get to see how this is going to affect our site. And then we can hit publish. We go back to the front end, and that will actually be, I thought I went back to the front end. So no, we're going to have a quick look at the menus. Um, you can control your menus from there. The widget areas we just made, you can control them from there. 
Um, you can even have a look at the home page settings where you can change it from being a blog page to a static page at the front, which is what I did earlier. And then also you can add in CSS here, which is really good because a lot of clients are going to want, we want their 15 year old nephew who's a coding whiz to have a bit of a fiddle with your site, okay? And that's great because he can fiddle away here. As you can see, I put in a body tag and then say display none instantly. It takes the site away, it's not displaying the body. It means they can fiddle around in there and they can add you CSS without getting near your core CSS and completely breaking your site and then blaming you for it. So it's really good that you can kind of have a quick experimentation there and see a live feedback. Now what's even cooler than that, because that is pretty awesome, but you can actually add more features to it. So we're going to have a look at theme logo here, which is a really nice feature. This is some uh, not too bad HTML or not too bad PHP. Um, what we're doing here is again adding theme support for a custom header is, is what they call it. And then we're going to load in some defaults. Here is an array of our defaults up here. So we have again a lovely Phil Murray fallback just in case someone doesn't put, put something in there. Um, a random default set to false. You can put in a whole load of different defaults and have them like cycle through that on page load. Um, then width and height, I just want them to be 150 fixed this time and there's a lot of other like uh, things you can, or a lot of other settings you can put in there and you can also put in whatever you want and pull them out at the front end too, which I will show you. Um, then the next thing we have to do is go to our functions PHP and call that file, because, sorry, completely skipped that, but we made our, a new file called theme logo PHP again inside this ink folder where I like to keep all the code. And then we go to the header of PHP and we call that out. So it's just as normal anybody who's done any web development at all. This is an IMG tag, very, very simple. It looks weird because I broke it onto four lines. That's just so I can that's just so I can see or so I can show you it a little bit easier, okay? So we've got our source and we're pulling out PHP header image. So that is actually going to pull out the URL of that image. We have the height, and this is where you can sort of echo out anything you want. So the height, you say echo, get custom header, and then whatever the value you assigned on that. So with way of height and width coming out. And then alt is this little tag that I always add, just because it's good practice for accessibility. Then what do we get? The front end, we have Phil Murray looking a bit grumpy there. And uh, he is our logo for the top of our site. But the cool thing is we can go in here now, because this control has come into the same place where we're going to control everything from. So we can go in here, we can click add a new image, I already have one in here, but if it wasn't 150 by 150, it brings up the cropping tool, and then you can crop it to be whatever size you want. It's another really nice feature of WordPress. And it Alive puts that in there for us, and then if we hit publish up at the top, you can see that the changes that we've made inside this editor are actually pulled through to the live site. It's like updating our code for us, which is quite simply amazing. There we go. So the next bit is even cooler than that, but this is where it's actually getting beyond my area of expertise in PHP. I wouldn't call myself a PHP developer, as I said earlier, but all of this code is all out there for you in the WordPress um, documentation. I'm just there for you to sort of use. Um, pretty much, I hate to say it, but copy and paste. It's kind of like a funny thing we say at work all the time. I copy, I paste, I web developer. But <laughs> with WordPress, I don't think it's that easy. <laughs> Um, we, uh, we got the back to, we're going to make a new file here called theme colors PHP, okay? So uh, this is broken into two slides here because I couldn't fit all in one, but I'll show you in the video next anyway. But what we're going to do here is, um, this is our function that was called whenever we set up our uh, customized in the first place. So we're calling this function, we're making an array called colors, and then each of these is an array item, a different color. So you'll see there's a slug, which is our ID, what we as developers use to call it. We have a default, which we can set to any color that we like. We have a label, which the user will see um, whenever they are seeing it from then. And then WCB, if you can guess, that's the word count Belfast. So you can change that label to B. So they're grouped together. You can uh, change that to do whatever you want. Then down at the bottom, we're going to loop through each of those, okay? So these settings and controls, that this is a proper I copy I paste I web developer job. Um, just got that straight from the from the WordPress documentation and um, yeah, everything just works so much easier than other platforms. And then the final, the final point of this is, okay, the last thing we're going to do is save PHP variables that we're going to pull through from get option header color. And then we're going to pass these into a style tag. This importantly should be below your call to your CSS because it's overwriting the CSS we've written in the first place. 
So the cool thing is you can kind of concatenate these together as well. This one that I, I gave it an ID of, of header BG color, but the user is going to see the tag uh, main theme color. So I can have the header, the sidebar, like any areas we want to take that main theme. We can have them all concatenated there. And then we also have just the other two settings as well, the header and the footer or the entry A is any link that's going to be in there. So let's go quickly to the demonstration. Oh yeah, sorry, and then one last time, we have to include that in our functions.php, otherwise it's not going to know that it exists. So we go back, let's have a look at all of our code, just so you know that it's not anything different. What I, we just showed on the screen is actually what we're saying. There's our functions, there's that split into two slides, where we couldn't fit it all in one, just scroll down so you can see it all. And here's our header with the exact same um, PHP variables and style tag. And then we go back into our customize area, and we have a new area that's opened up called colors. You click into that, and then the client can, although I would probably uh, exercise some sort of caution here because uh, you give them, give them the ability to change every color in the rainbow and they will use every bloody color in the rainbow. So <laughs> maybe, maybe some slight, uh, maybe slightly cartel like creative control, but uh, yeah, you can see that they give us a live update just like all of his other features does, which is a really cool thing in WordPress. Um, scroll out of the footer, I can hardly see it here, but once I change the color, it pops in nicely and we can see that. So, so many controls to change everything about the site and it's all in one place. So either the client is going to be looking at a page or a post and that's where they're going to control the content of that page or post. Anything else, they're going to be controlling from this one area. You don't have to train them to go, oh, when you don't update this, go to this part. When you want to go to this part, go to this part. Everything is going to be controlled from one place, which is just a really, really good product to give a client as an end product. So, but wait, you may be asking yourself, how does all of that work? And there is only one answer. It's witchcraft. <laughs> okay, well, maybe it's not witchcraft, and maybe my man Tom here could probably explain how all these features work, because you kind of blew my mind with your talk there. But me about the no, the, the important thing is, guys, we don't need to know how it works. What we need to know is that WordPress has built us this amazing system that we can build really, really powerful like, interactive websites with. And just with some basic HTML, CSS, and some very, very basic PHP there, we've built kind of a really cool product that will give the client really good ownership over their site. And more importantly, if you're selling as a product and not a service, there are some really, really good features to add in. Um, so can it do more? Yeah, it can do anything you want. This WP Customize can be rigged to add in anything you want. This is an example I found online where like, we're controlling icons on a page. We've got the ethos of the, web, of the company, which is every time like, they have a little bar that says our ethos, they can change it just from here and that will pull through to every page that uses that. Um, your header, your footer, your buttons, your portfolio, social links. Like, if you rig it, and the documentation's all there, if you rig it, it can do whatever you want it to do. So you can control every aspect of your site from WP Customize. So do we just make a killer theme with a customized UI? Let's have a quick recap. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can see that we've, I'm just going to repeat this now, actually. You can see that we've got, we've got all of our controls. As a, as a product, this is a really, really high-end product. We got one place to go to edit our content, and we got another place to go to edit every feature of our website, which is an amazing product to give the client in the end. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to uh, everyone who came today. It's been a real honor to be able to give something back to a community that has absolutely changed my life. Um, before I started developing on WordPress, I had no idea what I was going to do, and it's brought me down this wonderful path to a career that I love and enjoy going to work every day. So it's really, really nice to be able to give something back. And something I'd like to give to you, if any of this WP Customize or anything else we talked about interests you, please go to tinyurl.com forward slash wcb scene build and you can download all of that code and please feel free to edit it and improve it and like if you can make it better and post it back up again, I'd be really happy about that. I'll keep sharing the link and um, it'd be great to get some sort of community going. I'm at Bill Gill on Twitter so uh, hit me up if there's anything I can do for you or help you with. Right, though. Thank you very much.